Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the course on medical biomaterials. We will continue on the topic of uh, biopolymers or natural polymers. They seem to have a uh, very good uh, future in uh, design of uh, novel biomaterials with in conjunction with synthetic polymers or even with the metal, ceramics and so on actually. So um, we saw this slide uh, in the previous class. So we have the natural polymers, we have the synthetic polymers. So synthetic polymers could be polylactic acid, polylactic glycolic acid, polycaprolactone, polymethyl metacrylate, polyethylene glycol and so on. So those, these are all synthetic that means you synthesize them in the lab. Then we have the natural um, that means they come from the plants or they come from bacteria, fungi, uh, animals and so on. So here we have two types the polysaccharides the proteins. Polysaccharides as the name implies um, it contains uh, different types of sugars in a polymeric form. So it could be starch, alginate, um, chitosan, uh, chitin, glucons, um, then hyaluronic acid and so on. Now other type is proteins that means they have the amide bond C double bond O N that is the C double bond O amide bond. Uh, so it could be collagen, fibrin, silk uh, all those come under this category. So all these are called natural polymers they have many advantages. Uh, so one would like to uh, make use of them, they are biocompatible, uh, these biological recognition property that means cells are able to recognize them as uh, compatible material. So generally the cell adhesion differentiation is ex excellent when compared to synthetic polymers. But um, they also have disadvantages, poor mechanical properties, uh, they have uh, immunogenic pro uh, issues. Like uh, if you are taking material from animals, um, can we have contamination, toxicity, then limited supply, we cannot produce it in large supply like say polyethylene or uh, polypropylene or polymethyl metacrylate in an industry. So obviously there is a limited supply. So the polysaccharides we saw, that means they are made up of uh, monosaccharides like this, okay, then uh, this is called a glycosidic linkage, O glycosidic linkage. Okay. So we call this as uh, 1, 4 uh, because this is 1 and this is 4 and um, this is called 1, 6 linkage because uh, we have uh, the 1 here and the 6 here and these are called the alpha, alpha means the OH uh, uh, which forms the bond is below um, these uh, saccharide whereas uh, if the OH comes above then we call it the beta linkage. Okay. So there are different types uh, of uh, polysaccharides, we can have alpha linkage, beta linkage, we can have 1, 4, 1, 6, 1, 3. So different types of linkages, different types of um, sugars, monosaccharides, uh, you end up having a large variety of uh, polymers of this type. Okay. Uh, so starch for example has got this alpha 1, 4 uh, linkage and this 1, 6 happens once in 30. So when we have 1, 6 obviously you are going to have the branching, if it is totally 1, 4 then it is going to be very linear and crystalline, um, when you have branching it becomes a little bit amorphous, less crystalline. Okay. Um, hyaluronic acid, this is produced by bacteria, it is um, found in connective tissues, epithelial, uh, humor of the eyes in mammals, neural tissues, so it is a very important uh, polymer called hyaluronic acid. So we have the D-glucuronic, okay, D-glucuronic that is the acid glucuronic and N-acetyl glucosamine. So we have the amine here, we have the acetyl CH3CO group here okay. and they are linked by beta unlike the alpha which is down, beta is up. So this is how the hyaluronic acid is found. Then we also looked at chitin, chitin as you can see um, has uh, this acetyl in the nitrogen amine connected, so it is N acetyl glucosamine polysaccharide, okay. it is most abundant next to cellulose, um, it is uh, very useful. Then we saw chitosan, 
you produce chitosan from chitin that means you remove this acetyl group using a deacetylase enzyme. So, you end up having NH2 ok. So, this is highly water soluble um, and uh, de depending upon the degree of uh, removal of deacetylization uh, we can have the solubility very high or very low and so on actually whereas, uh, chitin is not soluble ok. So, this is a sort of a morphological uh, picture of uh, chitosan ok. It is insoluble at pH greater than 7, but at pH less than 6 positively charged this amino groups um, increases the solubility. So, this is deacetylization. Alginates, uh, so alginates, uh, alginic acid and so on ok, gover gum for example. So, it contains manuronic acid connected by uh, guluronic acid with a beta linkage as you can see this is a beta linkage. So, those with high guluronic acid content are used good for my biomedical application because they are stiff. When the this uh, guluronic acid amount goes down then it loses its stiffness ok. Um, so, these are produced by brown seaweeds um, several types of brown seaweeds ok. So, this gives a stiffness more soluble at lower pH than G m block ok. Uh, so, the G content can vary between 40 to 70 percent and the molecular weight is 50 to 100,000 kilo Dalton. So, alginates um, can be used for uh, drug encapsulation. Cellulose ok, this is what cellulose is ok, they are all connected ok like this. So, they are found uh, in cell wall of the plants, it is most abundant biopolymer, it is most abundant biopolymer. So, we have the anhydroglucopyranose here ok, anhydroglucopyranose as you can see here and they are connected by this uh, beta linkage here. Jo joined covalently by acetal functions between the C4 and the C1 right. So, they are connected by the C4 and C1 um, carbon beta 1 4 glycosidic. So, the beta 1 4 glycosidic linkage ok, the beta 1 4 this is 1 and this is 4 bestows resistance to chemical and enzymatic uh, uh, attack. Uh, these are linear chains ok, linear chains with 1000 to 2500 monomer units. So, we are talking quite a large molecular weight ok. So, the degree of linearity and presence of extensive OH group, lot of OH groups are present uh, leads to uh, inter and intramolecular hydrogen bond. So, we can have lot of inter intramolecular ok. So, it ends up being a crystal in a parallel arrangement. So, we can have one chain, another chain, another chain. So, it becomes a crystallized. Um, so, it influences its physical and chemical properties. So, it is widely found, it is crystalline in nature ok, lot of OH groups. Um, so, it forms very good hydrogen bond. So, it is poor solubility in common solvent because it is um, very crystalline, poor crease resistance, starch. If you remember olden days when you put starch to your clothes you have to iron them because it has got very poor crease resistance. Poor dimensional stability, uh, it lack of thermoplasticity, high hydrophilicity as you can see lot of OH groups. So, it is very, very, very water soluble. It does not have antimicrobial properties, uh, degradation is also very slow up to 60 weeks. So, what is done is there is physical chemical modifications, we can uh, remove some of the OH using acetyl so that we reduce the crystallinity and also we can reduce the water solubility ok, those are the thing. So, applications hemodialysis membranes, they make uh, uh, if you remember those who have a problem with their uh, uh, kidney and it does not function properly removing the urea and creatine obviously, they have to have this uh, um, hemodialysis done for purification of the blood for patients with the renal failure ok. So, cellulose diacetate membranes are used ok and there is a company called Altin which makes it is less toxicity ok. Um, blood filtration devices we can separate red blood cells leukocytes. So, if you are interested in uh, um, uh, red blood free plasma, then uh, we need to filter the blood, then uh, cellulose acetate type of membranes are used here. Scaffolds for cardiac regeneration, so cellulose acetate and regenerated cellulose fibrous matrix supports the growth of cardiac myocytes. So, we can use them for um, tissue engineering applications for growing cardiac myocytes. So, these are the applications of this particular pro product. 
then comes carboxymethyl cellulose. So, uh, we can convert this if it is H of course, you have the alcohol. Um, so, we add uh, the uh, um, carboxymethyl here then the solubility of it goes down crystallinity also goes down. Then it can be used for drug delivery uh, release of uh, for example, a drug to regulate motor response in Parkinson disease. Um, when they are incorporated in CMC powder um, then we can increase the sustained release of the drug okay, in nasal applications. Uh, scaffolds in tissue engineering. Uh, the CMC hydrogels they are pH dependent swelling characteristics. So, they can swell and absorb water. So, and they, hence they can capture drugs and then it can slowly release at the right pH. Okay. The potential wound dressing material uh, when it is combined with chitosan or hydroxapatite it can also used in bone and dental applications. As you know hydroxapatite used quite a lot in bone and chitosan also has very strong. So, it can be used in dental. So, carboxymethyl cellulose will have a good biocompatibility. So, they can be combined together. Okay. Microbial cellulose these are uh, the cellulose previous ones we saw are plant derived microbes also produce uh, cellulose like acetobacter xylenium uh, chemically similar to plant cellulose. So, they have a micro fibril and nano structured arrangement they can retain water they have very good biocompatibility, great elasticity, high wet strength confirm. So, it can be used in wound dressing, production of vascular conduits, bound scaffold. So, they are to be combined of course, uh, uh, with this uh, with the HA uh, for bone filling and so on actually. Then comes glucons, uh, glucons are also polysaccharides uh, either low molecular very low high molecular weight or low molecular weight polysaccharides. Um, so, alpha glucons and beta glucons are there, polysaccharides of D glucose monomers linked through these uh, glycosidic bonds. So, alpha of course, the you have the O below like I talked about. So, we have the 1 4 uh, 1 6 type of arrangement Did you see this 1 4 1 6 okay, type of arrangement. So, if you have here and here it is 1 6 if you have here and here it is uh, 1 4. Um, so, uh, alpha the bond the uh, glycosidic bond is below. Dextran it is an alpha 1 6 glucon. Glycogen it is an alpha 1 4 1 6. Pulalan alpha 1 4 and 1 6. Starch alpha 1 4. Okay. Um, so, all these are alphas and uh, they are called glucons high molecular weight polysaccharides uh, with D glucose monomers combined okay, in a linear fashion. We also have beta glucons, okay, the alpha glucon we have the um, okay, uh, O below, in the beta we have the O above. They are found in the cell walls of bacteria, fungi, yeast, algae, lysine, plants such as oats and barley leaves. Okay, so, that is the beta. So, we can have beta 1, 3. Okay. Okay, or we can have beta 1, 4. So, different types of uh, beta glucons are also possible. Okay. So, we can see the beta 1, 4 and uh, if you have this bond 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 1, 4 or we can have the beta 1, 3 that means 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, different types of uh, combinations are possible. These are long chain polymers of glucose they have this beta linkage. Okay. So, if it is 1, 3 uh, here it is going to have be a very linear 1, 3 structure uh, you can have 1, 4 that can lead to branching okay. you can have beta 1, 6 also. Okay. So, these linear glucons 1, 3 linear glucons can form uh, um, helical structure they have gelling properties um, the gelling property can be aff affected by modifying the temperature. Okay. So, quite a lot of uh, applications are already in use on these beta glucons. Okay. So, the characteristics so it depends on the linkage type that means um, 1 3 or 1 4 or 1 6 degree of branching because when you have 1 6 you can have molecular weight how many chains um, linear beta glucons can even be 60 70 kilo Dalton confirmational because these linear glucons can form triple helix single helix or random coil 
Okay, so they give them the jelly property uh, which changes with temperature, lower level of branching and lower polymerization degree, it is better solubility, but uh, large uh, molecular weight beta glucons are not water soluble, they have to be they are soluble only in formic acid or alkali. So, examples of beta glucon cellulose, beta 14, curdlan, beta 13, laminarin, beta 1316. Chrysol, lamarinarin beta 13, lentinin beta 1613, lichenin beta 1314, pluran beta 13 and beta 16, zymosan beta 13. So, we have different types of uh, examples depending upon the glycosidic uh, linkage. Okay. So, beta 13. Curdlan, it is uh, widely found, uh, bacteria also produces this and it is uh, this is a beta 13 glucon. Okay, beta 13, it is also called curdlan. As you can see, it has got gelling properties, um, it forms a triple helix type of structure which forms and breaks depending upon the temperature. Uh, so, these are linear glucon composed of beta 13 glycosidic linkage, this is called glycosidic linkage. Okay, molecular weight uh, 10 power 4 to 10 power 6. Okay. Um, bacteria produces agrobacterium, rhizobium. Alkali genes they all produced uh, maybe about 50, 60, 70 grams per liter. So, uh, it is widely uh, find lot of applications. It is insoluble in water, alcohol and organic solvents, but it dissolves in base dilute bases, uh, dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, formic acid. Okay. It is used, it is registered in the USA by in 1996 by the food FDA as a food additive. So, it is quite used in thick soup thickening, it is uh, for ent entrapping flavors, fragrance okay, uh, in noodles. So, it is widely used in, uh, in food. Okay. It possesses uh, uh, anti-tumor property, anti-HIV, anti-inflammatory, anti-infective wound healing properties. Of course, um, it has got very poor uh, uh, tensile properties, it has got some good compressive, so obviously we cannot use it. Uh, on its own, it needs to be uh, taken with uh, some other synthetic polymer um, to look at biomedical application. Applications encapsulation within gels. Uh, it gets prepared by heating the suspension of curdlan in aqueous solution, then cooling it. Drugs like indomethacin, salbutamol, sulfate, prednisone have been encapsulated. Uh, it provides sustained release of drugs. It can be also used for uh, drug delivery through rectal administration, uh, suppose stories. We can also make nanoparticles of these uh, of curdlan because it is hydrophobic component in amphiphilic drug delivery vehicle. We can graft polymer, copolymer curdlan with PEG and then put in a drug like uh, doxorubicin which can uh, lead to sustained drug release. Okay. That is another example. Immunotherapy, because uh, these beta glucons, the linear beta glucons, uh, the beta 1 3 leakage gives them the immunomodulatory properties. So, it seems it stimulates cytokine production, oxidative burst, increased phagocyte and lymphocyte proliferation. So, it can be looked at cancer resistance, disease immunity, wound healing. Um, it also been reported for tumor inhibition ratio. It also gives good inflammatory response and provides infection resistance and the survival against staph aureus in mice increased from 70 to 97 percent with glucon administration. The beta 1 3 gives immunomodulatory properties and hence um, these are possible applications of uh, this uh, beta glucon or uh, curdlon. Wound healing, they can recruit macrophages to wound site and increase collagen deposition. Uh, so, we can combine beta glucan collagen matrix as wound dressing, especially for burn wound healing in children, decreased healing time, improved cosmetic results. Then comes cyclic glucons, uh, the beta glucons, the linear beta glucons I mentioned is about uh, 60 to um, okay, it is uh, almost 10 power 5 uh, Dalton molecular weight and uh, it is not water soluble, it has been approved by FDA. And these cyclic glucons on the other hand um, are small molecular weight uh, uh, biopolymers. They have a cyclic uh, structure like this, they have cyclic 1316 or cyclic 12, uh, they are very hydrophilic 
they are water soluble, but the inner cavity is hydrophobic. So, we can uh, put in hydrophobic drugs very conveniently. The inner cavity diameter is about 1.5 nanometer. This is a picture of 1316 um, uh, cyclic beta glucon produced by Japonicum. It contains 13 glucose in it, and this is a 1 2 beta cyclic glucon. Um, okay. uh, so, the degree of polymerization is 17, that means there are 17 glucose in it. Okay. So, these two are common cyclic 1 3 1 6, cyclic 1 2, they have big inner cavity diameter. So, um, we can even encapsulate large drugs into it. Okay, that is the advantage also. What are the advantages? They can form inclusion. So, we may find industrial applications in food, pharmaceutical industries. Um, there are some literature where they have been used for chiral separation of biomolecules, uh, small molecules using um, the advantage of uh, the um, slight the cavity that is present in the cyclic beta glucon. It is got greater water solubility than cyclodextrins. You are talking in terms of 250 grams per liter soluble in water when compared to 18 grams of cyclodextrin okay, that is the advantages. The large cavity diameter of cyclic beta 1 glucon okay, may permit the formation of inclusion complex because the inner cavity diameter say for example of 1316 is about 1.5 nanometer, it has got lower viscosity. It is not subject to retrogradation that means degradation which is observed in conventional starches. Um, oh, when it is kept uh, for over a long period of time. So, they do not degrade, so they may have better um, shelf life. Now, comes proteins, we looked at uh, the polysaccharides, polysaccharides um, uh, are uh, those which have uh, sugar in them uh, arranged um, different types of sugars arranged in alpha or beta connected with the 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 6 type of linkages. So, different types of sugars, uh, we have amino groups present, um, then acetyls, deacetyled uh, and so on. Now, comes protein that means, they have an amide bond, okay. they are produced by condensation of amino acids that is polyamide. So, they will have a, all of these will have an amide bond that means, a peptide bond CONH that because of the reaction between NH2 and COOH that is how you form this CONH group. Okay. They are called amide bond or peptide bond. Um, so, there are um, proteins which are naturally occurring different types of proteins we will look at them. They are found in living things uh, present in skin, organs, muscles, hair and fingernails. So, obviously, they can, they can find applications in uh, um, tissue engineering. Okay. Uh, they can find application in wound dressing and so on actually. For example, collagen, it is widely found in our body, keratin, silk, elastin. So, all of them have very good biocompatibility, bio recognition properties. Okay. For example, collagen, it is most abundantly found protein in the body. There are 28 collagen types, type 1, 2 and 3 comprise of 80 percent of all collagens within the body because the 1, 2, 3 and 5 constitute the essential part of collagen in bone, cartilage, tendon, skin and muscle. Okay. It is composed of triple helix like this, you know collagen has a triple helix. So, they have two identical alpha 1, these are called and there is something called an alpha 2, there is a slight difference in their chemical composition, they are connected as a tip, triple helix. They get denatured, uh, if you denature you will get them and if you have the enzymatic degradation of you will get short peptides, small, 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 small peptides like this actually collagen. Okay. Um, so, the structure of collagen uh, was originally discovered uh, as you know by an Indian scientist um, G Ramachandran, Professor G Ramachandran uh, found out that, that it forms a triple helix. Um, it is composed of a triple helix two identical chains alpha 1 and then one middle one that is called alpha 2. So, the alpha 1 has a molecular ma weight of 95 kilo daltons, uh, width of 1.5 nanometers and 0.3 um, micron. Okay. So, the composition of collagen is atypical for proteins. Okay. 
So, it is got very high hydroxyproline content, okay. So, it is caused very high hydroxyproline content. Uh, so, the what are the properties? It is got low antigenicity, low inflammatory and cytotoxic responses, it has got very high water affinity, it got good cell compatibility and availability of various methods for isolating from variety of sources, biodegradable, it is found, collagen is found in human uh, bones and tissues uh, in abundant. So, obviously, when we make a uh, um, material with collagen, the system, the human body and human system uh, will not uh, consider it as a foreign body. So, hence there is a lot of research being done on collagen as a possible biomaterial in the tissue engineering area, in cartilage design, in filling, in orthopedic area and so on actually, okay. So, advantages adva available in abundance and easily purified from living organism, non-antigenic, biodegradable, bioresorbable, non-toxic, biocompatible, synergic with bioactive components. So, it is got good tensile strength and minimal minimal expressibility, uh, hemostatic, it promotes by blood coagulation. Um, disadvantages, pure type 1 collagen is very expensive. So, variability of isolated collagen, cross link, there are a lot of variations, cross link density can change, fiber size can change, there could be impurities and because it is highly hydrophilic, it could start swelling and hence if we have encapsulated any drugs, it be rapidly released. So, variability in enzymatic degradation rate as compared with hydrolytic degradation. Uh, complex handling properties, there are a lot of side effects. For example, if I isolate a colla collagen from a bovine, um, so we could have uh, some toxicity, uh, bovine spongiforum, mensalope, uh, pathy and mineralization all these uh, foot and mouth disease which can get transmitted from these animals. So, the scare of that is uh, um, very, very um, serious. So, um, it can be used for many things already. It is cat gut sutures, first recorded use of collagen in a biomedical product, surgical sutures, so it degrades by the body, repair of wounds and severe tendons in gladiators, it has got full tensile strength which remains for 7 days. Then vascular prosthesis, prosthesis. So already there is a product, uh, OmniFlow, um, which is used for vascular prosthesis. So collagen polyester composites used for peripheral arterial reconstruction, a sound structural durability, long term patency rates, low infection rates. Okay. Um, addition barrier membrane. It reduces internal scarring following surgery by separating the internal tissues and organs during healing. It has got good handling property, it conforms readily to tissue contours, um, then uh, shields for bandage contact lenses which gradually dissolved in the cornea. So, the mechanical properties of the shield protect the healing corneal epithelium from the blinking action of the eyelids. It also delivers drug to the ocular surface, lubricates the surface of the eye, increases the contact time between drug and cornea, increases epithelial healing. So, a lot of uh, advantages of collagen. So, as I said, there are already some products um, in the market and um, there is a lot of uh, research being done on the use of uh, collagen into biomedical applications. We will continue further on these uh, protein based um, natural biomaterials in the next class also. Thank you very much for your time.